Hi, I'm Faith, and you're watching Willoughby DIY. Today's video is an Easter special video. I'm just going to make this adorable little standing sign for you guys just to celebrate Easter together. And I'm uploading it the day before Easter in place of doing my normal Monday upload. But be on the lookout for a challenge video I'll be uploading this coming Friday. But I got this wood cut out from the Dollar Tree, and I found it last minute, so this is why it's a last minute Easter video. <laughs> But I'm going to paint the basket portion of it with this burnt umber paint by Apple Barrel. And I'm using a foam brush. You could really use any brush. Um, this was just close to my hands. <laughs> so I'm going in giving one thin coat, very thin coat, all over the basket portion of this sign. And then I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to wipe off any excess paint. That way you have that nice wood texture showing through and it looks pretty rustic and cute. And then for the handle part, I'm going to use that same color, but a different paintbrush so that I can get a nice clean line for the handle. And once that line is down, I'm just going to fill that entire handle in with that paint and repeat the same process with the paper towel by wiping off any excess paint. And once this is all done, I want to make it look more like a basket. So to do that, I'm going to use this stencil that I got from the Dollar Tree a while back. It's one of the four stencils that you can get on their stencil wheels. And then I'm going to take Territorial Beige and just use a portion of this stencil and make a basket weave pattern basically all over it. And it ended up a really nice basket weave look, I think. The best part is you don't have to be super careful. I'm really impatient and not very careful with my stenciling. And if this looks a little messed up, that's fine because it's a basket. It can be rustic and messy and that's okay. <laughs> See, it's so cute. And for the handle, I do the same exact thing, only I use a different part of that stencil and just made one of those like spiral looking basket handles. I don't know how to how to describe that handle, but I think you know what I'm talking about if you've seen baskets. And I just use little scrap pieces of paper to cover up my bow. I did do that on the eggs too, but since I'm gonna Mod Podge a really thick paper over it, I really didn't have to do that. And once you're all done with your stencils, we can take some paper and start decoupaging. I found this paper pack at the Dollar Tree, guys. I've never seen it before. I don't know if it's new to you guys, but it's new to me, and it's a great deal. That much craft paper for a dollar, and it's all different types. I took this really pretty thinner paper, pink paper for the ribbon, and then I got that purple and blue textured paper for the eggs. And I did make an egg before this one, that's why that purple paper is already cut up, but it didn't work out. <laughs> so to get the shape I needed to cover that entire area, I just took the paper and pressed it down and basically embossed that shape of that egg and the top of the basket part. Just embossed it onto the paper using my thumbnail and its dotting tool. You can use just about anything. And then I just cut it out. I gave it, I cut it out a little bit wider than it needed to be. That way I can trim a little at a time so that it would line up pretty much perfectly. And then for the blue eggs, I just repeated the same process. Thank you. 
and now we're just gonna Mod Podge these on. I put a really generous layer of Mod Podge down, put down my paper, and just sort of smoothed it out. The best part about this paper is you don't have to worry about wrinkles because they're not gonna show up anyway. <laughs> And I love the texture. It's, it's kind of like an egg carton texture almost, like really homemade paper look. I really liked it. And then once I've got those all Mod Podged on, I take a damp sponge and just dampen all the egg paper with that. And then layer that with another decent coat of the Mod Podge. And I do the same embossing process on the bow, cut it out, and I used only one piece of that pink paper actually for the whole bow. And I attempted to dampen this paper before I mop podged it on and it just, it was a pain. So I just repeated the process I did with the eggs. Mod Podge, paper, wet sponge, more Mod Podge. But this paper was more, I don't know, it was more like a homemade paper in a way. It, it, every time I tried to smooth out the Mod Podge, it would just fuzz up on me. <laughs> you could see like right here, it just, yeah, gross. <laughs> so real quick, I wanna let you guys know I am over on Instagram. Please come follow me there for sneak peeks, updates, and just some fun behind the scenes stuff please answer this question down below in the comments. What's your favorite Easter tradition? Mine is paint, hand painting eggs with my husband and my daughters. After this is completely dry, and it'll probably take you a few hours, depending on how much Mod Podge and how wet you got the paper, but I let mine dry overnight. And then I go in with my X-Acto knife, and I'm just gonna trim up all that paper. Once it's dry, it's hard, so Using an X-Acto knife is pretty easy. And I sand it a little bit too with a sanding sponge. And you do that with your bow and your eggs. To give this some more detail, I decided to go in with some paint. So for the purple egg, I use this Velvet Crush paint. And I just outlined the egg. And then I kind of dry brushed with a sort of stippling motion around the egg to give it more dimension and, I don't know, just looks cool and I added some highlights with white and for the blue eggs I used a combination of those two paints the uh, turquoise and the true blue and I did the same exact thing and don't forget your highlights I think it makes them pop so well for my bow I used this candy pink just to outline it and I feathered it in a little bit and added some little creases where real bow would have creases on it. So I add a couple lines up there to give them some creases. And while this color doesn't match up that well, it's still really pretty. For the W, I used this parakeet green and I gave it a really thick coat of it because I don't want it to dry before I'm done because I want to go back in with some white paint and give it some highlights and it's easier to blend the paint if the paint's still wet. Once it was dry, I gave it some solid white highlights, just a hint, and that was it. Finishing touch though, I took one of these cute little green flower-shaped buttons from uh, one of those Dollar Tree button jars and just hot glued it right there on my bow. And I wanted this to stand, not hang, so I took two of the Tumbling Tower block pieces and just attach them to the back with some hot glue. Super simple, but you could definitely leave it a hanging sign. Just add your jute cord back in there or some ribbon, whatever. But I wanted it to stand so they could sit on my front porch table and add a nice little pop of Easter to my existing spring decor. And I think this turned out beautifully. The texture in that paper just makes it for me. And I love that I used that stencil to make a basket leaf pattern work better than I could have imagined, honestly. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Happy Easter to you guys. I hope you have an amazing day with your family. 
Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it, please like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Make sure to hit that notification bell so you know every time I upload a video. And as always, I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you guys next time.